Hi there, friend. This is Lee Posky. Today I have a message for my Christian brethren that's intended to help alleviate some confusion you may have about the law. The thought that I'm going to address is, how are we Gentiles freed from the law when we Gentiles were never under the law in the first place? How are we to understand passages like Galatians 3.24, which speak about the schoolmaster that brings us unto Christ, if we were never under the law? Now this is a thought worth considering, because there are a lot of very bold messages in Scripture that are similar in nature to Galatians 3.24. Colossians 2.14 is a perfect example. Listen to this. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Wait, Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, writing to the church at Colossae, which were predominantly Gentile Christians. He was writing to them how that Jesus had blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against them, and then the thought comes to mind, what ordinances? I thought that Gentiles were not under the law. This is the same kind of dilemma as Galatians 3.24, isn't it? Well, let's see what Scripture has to teach us. Actually, Romans chapter 2 gives us the direct answer to this question. So I'm going to read this to you and explain it as I go. So listen carefully. Romans 2, verses 6 through 16. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? Now notice how every man is being addressed here, Jew and Gentile. Verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. So we see here how every man, both Jew and Gentile, are accountable to God for their sins. Verse 10, But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. Again, it's stated that both Jew and Gentile are being addressed here. In other words, those being addressed here are both those who were under the law of Moses and those who were not under the law of Moses. Verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God. There it is again, the truth that all of humanity is equally accountable to God. Verse 12, For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Now let me pause here for a moment and say something about that statement. The doers of the law shall be justified. Paul writes elsewhere, all over his epistles, how that by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So we know for a fact, because of redundant scripture that teaches about justification by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast, that Paul's statement here, that the doers of the law shall be justified, cannot possibly mean that someone gets to heaven by their keeping the law. Therefore, that statement can be understood this way. It's a reminder that full compliance to the law is required for justification. Partial compliance to the law will not be accepted by God. So those people who think they keep the law should stop in their tracks and realize they're not really keeping the impossible demands of the law that the law really requires. And in accordance with that warning, embrace the fact that Jesus, as his elect's representative, has fulfilled the law perfectly in their stead. Remember Matthew 5.17? Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Did you hear that? Jesus did fulfill the law. Now, moving on to verse 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, 
are a law unto themselves, which showed the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Did you get that, friend? The Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law. These, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. There. Do you see that? While Gentiles are not under the written law of Moses, Gentiles, in fact, everyone, everyone have the moral law of God written on our hearts since, since birth, since we were born. We've had this. And this goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. This goes back to when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That same knowledge of right and wrong that comes from God is the law that stamped on the conscience of every human being since the fall of man. In fact, earlier in this same book, in Romans chapter 1, we're taught about this situation. Listen to this, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So right there, we're taught that the truth is revealed to all ungodliness, to all of humanity, and the guilt and wrath that abides on guilty man for his wickedness is suppressed by wicked men who reject the, who reject the light. This is the exact same type of teaching that we see in John chapter 3, verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Do you see that, friend? They are without excuse, which means that a Gentile who lives in some remote corner of the world and he, this person dies who's never even heard of a Bible, let alone the details of Scripture about the law and things like that. They are still without excuse before God. Why is that? It's because God has shown everyone His law of right and wrong internally. He's shown everyone in our conscience good versus evil and judgment and our accountability to God for our actions. Everyone, everyone is under the curse of having knowledge of good and evil, the law written on our hearts from birth. Adam and Eve knew about it when they fell. That's what the fig leaves were about. Internally, they knew they were guilty of the law of God written on the conscience. And every single one of us has felt the weight of that same law written internally on our conscience. Therefore, praise God. No matter if you identify yourself as a Gentile or a Jew, if you belong to God, this is what ultimately matters the most. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. All right. Well, I hope that's been helpful to you, and I thank you for sharing some of your valuable time with me. All glory to the risen Lord Jesus Christ, and no glory to us whatsoever. Bye-bye.